uh, an overview of externally what the vehicle looks like. Uh, you see a, a relatively large vehicle, uh, a lot of moving parts to make it go from being a land combat vehicle to a high water speed vehicle. Uh, Two-man turret, again, a, you know, a, a big chunk of that built by the folks here at ATP. What we fire is this, uh, which comes, uh, it's 30 millimeter rounds, so obviously much bigger than, uh, than the, the 50 cal that we fire now. Comes in both a, an armor piercing round, so that for heavier type, you know, if we were to end up in combat operations against, you know, a country that has organized military with, uh, with mechanized forces and that kind of stuff, you have an armor piercing round that's capable of defeating all of those sorts of vehicles. But then we also have HE and multi-purpose rounds that explode like this, um, but they have a certain amount more penetrating power, produce a, a, a lot more fragmentation or just a lot more powerful round. Um, and they can reach out about uh, three to 400 meters further accurately than can these. So that's, that's one of the big aspects of this part of the vehicle that's, uh, that, that's sort of a very important upgrade to, uh, from the current capability to where we're going. In, in Iraq, uh, the, the first part of our engagement there, 2003, 2004, 2005, um, you know, some of the things that, uh, uh, you know, the, the Army, the Marine Corps, and, and other countries are doing in, uh, in southern Afghanistan that just require a good combat vehicle. Um, and so we've got to have just a, a good ground combat vehicle. The deal is we also, because from time to time we're going to get called, you know, to do something that also requires it to be a really great amphibious vehicle. So we've got to have that capability as well. So we wouldn't use that amphibious capability all the time, every time. But it's one of those things that when you need it, there's sort of no good substitute for it. So you've got to have that capability uh, inherent in a vehicle that you already own for a whole lot of other purposes. So, uh, single shots, and we're going to fire burst shots, a uh, burst of five shots, and then a burst of 20 shots. And make sure you keep your ears protected until they, they say that that's complete because there will be interruptions in that fire. And you may hear other firing because this is a firing range, so just, just be alert. You may hear some other firing because we have National Guard fire here as well as us, um, but it'll be far enough away so you want to protect from that. Ready to fire, one, two, three. vehicle is you know, a dismounted enemy formation, enemy in, in sort of, you know, whatever their, their equivalent of a Humvee or something would be. Anything bigger than that, the other vehicle needs to sort of run away and hide and get somebody else to fight that fight. This vehicle allows us to keep the infantry embarked, move through sort of a, a heavier sort of enemy force and be able to adequately protect them by being lethal out to that 2,000 meters or so. So, I mean, a tremendous asset as well as then once you're in an area where you've dismounted the infantry as you need to actually do you know dismounted operations is every squad then has a cannon like this sort of at their service and direction ready to fire one two three